Hi guys, Susan Gallagher here, also known as that sassy homeless landing cobra guy. And check out my most recent interview with Nexus Geek Zone. See you there. So welcome to the Nexus Geek Zone channel. We have a special guest today. She is a tremendous actress and she played the role of homeless Ling in Cobra Kai. Please welcome the wonderful actress Susan Gallagher, aka the homeless Ling. Thank you very much. Hi guys, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So let's start with this interview because we know you have a short time with us. So how is the contact to be in Cobra Kai and get the role of homeless Ling? Um, gosh, it's just been such an amazing blessing to be a, even a small part of something that is so amazing and so special to so many fans. Um, you know, I, I just would have never imagined that uh, the fans would have embraced Homeless Lynn like they have, number one, this sassy and somewhat provocative woman on the street who is actually <laughs> filthy, right? But um, yeah, I had seen the, um, the breakdown on actorsaccess.com, which is sort of a, a sidekick of the breakdowns that come out of Los Angeles. It's sort of a self-submitting site. And because none of my agents would have ever submitted me for a homeless woman, right? So I submitted myself with this really rough looking headshot that I had. And um, I was requested, they requested me to tape an audition. So I taped an audition, uh, a couple of different takes, and um, I got a call back. And I was like, oh, wow, I've got to meet the big three, who of course is John, Josh, and Hayden, right? Yeah. And so uh, I drove to Atlanta and went in full character as a homeless person because I, I knew that I was going to have to be convincing enough to be able to play the role. So I put like dark makeup underneath my eyes and, and I widened out my lips and, and I, I looked like a straight up drug addict. That's kind of what I was going for that look. And I like teased out my hair like I had dreads and everything and um, wore my husband's big old, old sweats and just looked a mess, but I had a blast and um, they liked what I did and I got the part and I've just been grateful and enjoying the ride every, every minute of it. Yeah, we can imagine it's a, it's a huge challenge now because in make a homeless person <laughs> You are a tremendous actress and you make other roles, but I, I think this is the first time you in make a, a homeless person, right? It is. I had, um, I had actually been cast in a, a, a short film playing the part. It was the lead role, actually, in an indie film called Picking Back Up. And it was the part of a drug addict, a woman whose um, husband had died and she was strung out on drugs and she was being evicted from her house and she was like melting down. So that's the closest um, role that I have had to Homeless Land. But just the filth and the dirt makeup and the layers of dirt makeup and filth that they put on her and, and then the, the the wardrobe they spend a lot of time um tearing and ripping and taking chains and beating her clothes to give it that filthy damaged look and um so it's the first time that I've, I've ever played someone quite this extreme and it's just it's been a blast because the writing is so hilarious for this <laughs> This character, just the one liners and <laughs> and the fans just adopt these ha hashtags and the, they develop a life a life of their own. Like, uh, you know, I ain't gonna hurt ya or open up and give me money or I want method burrito <laughs> or now it's like don't make me throw a shoe at ya. Or <laughs> I mean there's so many funny ones. So yeah, we've had a good time with it. <laughs> Um, we have uh, some questions for our subscribers, and, okay, and the first one is uh, what well, Michelle said. Do you like Johnny Lawrence talking about the homeless Lynn? <laughs> Does homeless Lynn like Johnny Lawrence? She likes giving him a hard time. For sure, <laughs> that's what she likes. But she doesn't miss a meal if you pay attention. Um, she's kind of all about the food, but she might, I mean, who knows? She might like cream. She might like Pastor Bobby. I mean, you know, she's, um, 
She's a little bit of a provocative type of woman, but yeah, she likes Johnny Lawrence and she, she really likes to give him a hard time. So I think it's more that that having fun with him and toying with him and trying to get up underneath his skin a little bit. And maybe she like like a have a crush on Johnny or only a friendship. Um, does she have a crush on Johnny? Lynn might have a crush on a lot of guys. You just never know because she's not really been around any other men. So we don't know what kind of energy. I think I mean obviously those characters, Homeless Lynn and Johnny Lawrence, have a really good chemistry together, right? So, I mean, that's kind of a given. It's just an organic kind of uh, chemistry or energy or whatever. But, you know, it'd be interesting to see how she would interact with Crease or with um, Pastor Bobby or who knows who they may bring back in the future. You know, there's so many <laughs> theories out there about Homeless Lynn that maybe Dutch you know, could be her ex or her husband. And, you know, they were strung out together and he ended up in prison or, you know, then I've also heard that um, Lynn and Mike Barnes are Tori's parents. <laughs> I don't know if you have heard that or not, but. <laughs> so it would be interesting to see if Lynn has that same uh, chemistry with other men that she has with Johnny Lawrence, but we don't know. She maybe can be uh, the great couple for another cobra guy. Maybe, like you say, Dodge or maybe Mike Burns. Yeah, yeah, bad boy <laughs> Mike Burns. <laughs> <laughs> our, our pastor, Bobby, Ron Thomas, who I right, adore right. in real life. I mean, he's such a nice guy. And I have <laughs> named him um, for Lynn and I. He is called hashtag preacher boy. So I don't know if you say that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Another subscriber say, Valeria Candia, where homeless Lynn live? Because we know she's um, in a lot of places because she's homeless, but she have a special place? Yeah, right outside the Cobra Kai dojo. <laughs> 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 yeah, she's, she's hanging out at the Mart. I mean, um, you know, she, Johnny Lawrence was nice enough to give her a job. He was her, you know, only employer that, that we've seen so far. And of course she steals his sign and uses it for the roof of her house, whatever, <laughs> out on the sidewalk. So yeah, yeah, she's she's right outside the dojo. <laughs> Another subscribe uh, say, El Pibe de la Esquina. Why do you follow Johnny in every season? <laughs> Why do I follow Johnny in every season? That's what the writers write. <laughs> You know, I, I do what it, Lynn goes wherever the writers want her to go. And um, she will say whatever their brilliant and hilarious minds come up with. So we'll see. I thought um, that the um, season three, the soup kitchen was pretty funny. Yeah. And, and a I, lot of, I've had some people even make a comment that I, I found was interesting. I hadn't even thought about it, but they were like, you know, normally in the past seasons, um, you know, you kind of see Lynn coming or you see her over in the distance, like digging in a trash can or she's sitting on the sidewalk spinning that dumb donut fritter <laughs> in season two. But in season three, and I hope I'm not giving any spoilers, I'm assuming that everybody's seen season three, right? Um, that you don't expect her, you know, because the camera's on giant, then you hear her going, Hey, stop holding up the line, you know, you know maybe throw a shoe at you. So I've had people say that, that uh, they didn't expect to see her there because she's usually, you know, hanging out at the Mart. So they really liked that aspect of the writing in season three for Homeless Lynn is that it was so unexpected. And it's like, oh my gosh, there she is. There's, there's Lynn. So that was fun. Is Homeless Lynn how... A protective angel. A protective angel. Oh, kind of like the um, in the Matrix, the Oracle. Because, or right. like that. <laughs> because uh, I, she appears in very important moment from Johnny. 
I love that theory, guys. I think that's a great theory. And I love the Matrix. I love the Oracles. Both of those women, I think, are brilliant. And um, some of the fans have even said maybe uh, similar to the homeless woman in Sons of Anarchy, if you're a fan of that show. So we'll see, you know, where they take this character. You just never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we, we know and we, we saw uh, homeless link always appear in Johnny a big moment like the first season uh, when Johnny meet Miguel in the store uh, after the bullies attack him she's she's in that place and in the season three in the kitchen why is this, why homeless link is on them why uh, what is the problem yeah and the fact that her uh, that his son that Robbie saw homeless land too and saw and homeless land too. interacting with johnny lawrence i thought that 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 was interesting and they even cut to to robbie uh to tanner's character to establish that he saw this crazy sassy woman filthy woman <laughs> he's talking to his dad right <laughs> yelling at his dad but i think that homeless land does provide a little bit of comic relief for johnny because his life is so full of drama. I mean, it's like drama rama. So you gotta lighten up and you know have something to break that tension, right? And from your perspective, how did you end up homeless? How is this background from this character? Because the series never had focused on on him. And I know. What, what is yeah. your opinion about this background from homeless limb? Yeah, that's a really great question. Um, it, it'd be a, a, a really interesting question to ask one of the big three and see what their take is on that. Um, you know, the, the fans have so many theories. I mean, like I told you, one of the favorites is the thing with Dutch who's in prison and there, there's um, <laughs> Terry Silver has been thrown around and um, that maybe she's even working undercover and she's really not a drug addict. There's been that she is an angel there that maybe his mother sent um, to watch over Johnny. There's been um, that she was, you know, uh, it's some kind of special ops herself, kind of like Crease and uh, had some tragedy and some severe PTSD and ended up homeless and on drugs, that kind of thing. So, you know, I mean, people don't just end up on the streets like that. So there's got to be something that has happened in this woman's life to make her give up on herself and on society. But I think that homeless Lynn um, sort of just plays by her own rules and isn't a victim. And I didn't want to play her as a victim. I wanted her to, um, to kind of set her own way and to, to be strong and sassy and, and more of a fighter than a victim. So um, I'm glad that they let me take her in that direction. But I mean, it's also hilarious, the writing. So at the end of the day, I think that um, going back to Johnny's life, having so much drama, uh, you know, we all need to laugh, right? I mean, laughter is the best medicine. So I, I think that it's fun to, to create something that's more lighthearted and um, silly and ridiculous and <laughs> all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> and talking about theories, uh, do you think uh, homeless Lynn had a family, uh, uh, especially when talking about uh, a daughter or a son or a husband, because we know maybe, maybe she had a, a big piece of the puzzle from the season four, just maybe talking about the new characters in the in this new season. What do you think about it? Do you think Homeless Lynn uh, have a big piece from this puzzle? You just never know what the writers have in their mind. I mean, there are obviously so many characters that they're having to focus on. I just hope that they remember um, Homeless Lynn enough to bring her back and for an appearance. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's so many theories out there from, from you know, the bad boy Mike Barnes to Terry Silver to Dodge to, to uh, Pastor Bobby to Johnny himself. Um, 
you know, I mean, my favorite theory, and this is completely self-serving as an actor, but it would be that she's got like a twin, an evil twin sister. Um, and everybody thinks she's so nice, but really she's a mean one. And she's contributed to Lynn's um, ending up on the streets and just, you know, rebelling and, and feeling badly about herself or whatever. And then that way I could, I could play two daring characters and have twice the camera time and twice the work because I just love work. I love my work. I love what I do. <laughs> <laughs> And will we and will we see uh, Holmes Lim in season four? Well, you know what? We will see. We will see. Fingers crossed, right? <laughs> <laughs> Burritos crossed, right? <laughs> <laughs> and, and another question for the Cobra Kai series uh, for you: Who wins the Old Valley? <laughs> Homeless Land wins, of course. <laughs> 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 right, right. Yeah. And what are your opinion about the the Cobra Kai dojo? Because now is with John Chris uh, have the the dojo for him, and John is in another dojo, Eagle Fang. Do you think uh, Homeless Ling follow Johnny with Miyagi Do and Eagle <laughs> Fang, or she stay on Cobra Kai with John Chris? It's a really good question. Um, I mean, you know, the Cobra outside the Cobra Kai, that's that's her home. That's that's her mart. Don't be hustling, no point. In my mart, you know, finish up and then beat it. So she's very territorial of that area, and I think that um, you know she she knows those people in that mart, all those businesses. She probably knows Lyle, the pawn shop guy played brilliantly by Matt Berlinke and, uh, you know, in the, the mini mart, Baz Sanchez, I don't know if y'all have interviewed him, but he's, he's um, I think, hilarious and done a great job in there, uh, in that role. But um, there was something a fan said something about, oh, oh they were talking about that, that uh, Homeless Lynn's hair was a little bit, <laughs> it's hilarious, was a little bit, darker um, in season three than in season one and season two. And, and they did tone down my, my highlights uh, a little bit. And uh, they said, yeah, well, she's probably knows uh, the people in the hair salon at the Mart. <laughs> she's in there hustling to color for her hair or something like that. So I thought that was funny. Um, yeah, it's just, it, you know, it's all good and I'm just, very, very thankful to to have um, been part of this amazing show and the Karate Kid with all of their following. And it just seems like the message of the Karate Kid and, and so many people tell me that it had such a wonderful impact on their lives. So, I mean, those are the kind of people that I'm, I'm getting to meet are people who truly appreciate the values and, and the message and, and the late great Pat Morita and what, what he brought um, to this wonderful, wonderful show. But um, yeah, and, and Ralph Macchio, I think it would be interesting to see the energy between Lynn and Daniel. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah. 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 This, this, um... And Ralph Macchio and William Sapka are two greatest actors, and the chemistry they have in the show is amazing because we saw all the Canada movies, and wow, in the first movie they have all attention. It's so so hard to to watch the when Johnny attacks Daniel, and now in Cobra Kai they change a lot because all of them have two different destinies. Johnny is on a bad, bad look, and Daniel have a lot of luck. And in the first season, we saw a great change from, from Daniel because we think in Daniel have a uh, whole hate from Johnny for all the first movie. But no, they are friends. And in season two, this relationship were more like a rivalry, but they don't have hate. In the season three, they work together. So this transformation for both characters are so good. 
Yeah. And as soon as you think that it's going to go in this direction, the big three flips it <laughs> and they just keep you on the edge of your seats every minute because they're such great riders. Yeah. But yeah, but that, that friendship and the, or, well, that relationship between those two characters is just, um, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. And there's, they're both such great actors and, and are just all in. I mean, they're so dedicated and, and so passionate about this project. It, it just shows, you know. And what is your- One of the reasons it's been so successful, right? Yeah. 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 What 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 is your favorite character from Cobra Kai? Well, besides Lynn, and I mean, I love Johnny Lawrence, and I love his humor more than anything. But I would have to say, uh, I've already mentioned him already. Lyle, the pawn shop guy, played by Matt Berlinke. Um, I just love that kind of humor, and I think that Matt does a great job. And I can just sit and laugh and and watch those scenes over and over again with in the pawn shop. <laughs> I love the laugh and I, I like comedy and uh, I just love the writing for that character and I just think Matt does a great job. And the chemistry between Matt and Johnny, I mean, you got to admit, it's pretty funny too because, um, you know, Matt just thinks he's this, this idiot. And, <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> it's funny. And how fun. Is Susan Gallagher fan of Miyagi Do, of Eagle Fang, of Cobra Kai? Um, right now, I'm, I'm still sticking kind of with Cobra Kai because, um, you know, she doesn't even know where Johnny is as far as I know. We'll just see. They, we'll see if they bring her back in season four and, um, you know, see if what they've got old Lynn up to. See what that old gal's up to. And talking about the movies, uh, what is the character do you want to see in season four? I'd love for them. I'd love for them to be able to bring back Dutch, but I, I don't know. He's he's so busy with um, the race team and all of that. But I mean, I think Terry Silver did a phenomenal job. I think he would be a really fascinating character. But my favorite of all time is bringing back Allie. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like okay, um, that was a bucket list kind of thing. So I'm good. Just the fact that they brought back Allie, I just I love it. It was my favorite part. Season three was my favorite season of the whole show. Uh, well, uh, talking about uh, the old piece of Karate Kid, uh, more specific in Karate Kid 3, uh, will we see new faces in season four? Um, let me see. No. Um, uh, I, I, have no, uh, I have no Thomas idea. Ian and the Sean Cannon. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you like to see come back? Mm. Thomas Sheehan, but <laughs> I like more um, Sean Cannon with Mike Burns' character. I think in, it will be interesting to see Daniel with Mike Burns in this, this comeback, right? Because in Karate Kid movie, we see uh, not clearly end from this fight. We only wow. see Daniel, yeah, we only see Daniel with Miyagi celebrating, but we never know about the Terry Silver, Mike Burns, and in that moment, John Chris. In what yeah. happened next? What's next for well, that? Well, I mean, do you follow um, Sean Kanan? Yeah, yeah, we follow them. Okay, I mean, he's, I think he's teasing a lot out there. I mean, that guy is in shape. <laughs> he's been training with Vidal, and, um, you know, he's, he's bringing it. So I don't know if they're going to bring him back at four or five or six or sometime, but he's ready or whatever. Um, so kudos to him, you know, my hat's off to him because he's um, embraced it and embraced the fans and is very proactive on social media. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we can see his videos and his photos from his Instagram and we know he's already from Cobra Kai and the yeah. fans know that because we want to see Mike Burns in, in Cobra Kai, but we only hope the season four or season five, but we hope come next because we want to see Daniel against Mike. I know, that'd be quite a fight. Quite a fight. And 
Another question from the subscriber uh, is, what can we expect from Cobra Kai season four? Well, um, I would probably be fired if I even knew anything and I shared it, so I can't. But I can promise you this, there's gonna be, um, I'd say lots of fighting and it's gonna just blow you away. It's gonna blow people away. And what, is your, <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite moment for um, Cobra Kai? Oh, uh, I would say um, when Johnny and Allie were uh, went on their little date. I just love that. I'm a romantic. So I just love that. Who makes more a uh, cute couple? Daniel with Ellie or Johnny with Ellie? Johnny with Allie. Yeah. Johnny with Ellie or Johnny and Carmen? Johnny and Allie. Yeah, you that's, have. That's just me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you. Or they, homelessly. <laughs> oh, yeah, homelessly. <laughs> that was be better. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Poor yeah. Johnny, right? <laughs> <laughs> they do the dream sequence with Carmen and then the nightmare sequence with Lynn and Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is about Johnny and Lynn is if he doesn't watch it, he could end up in the gutter with Lynn. And she knows that, and he might deep down know that too, that, um, you know, if he's not careful with his horse banquet and getting his act together, that he could he could be right down there with her in the gutter on the streets. So, so shape up, right? <laughs> yeah. So if we, we can see Homeless Link in season four again, uh, how many episodes do you think the, she appears? I wish, I wish more than, you know, I, I wish just any, I'll be grateful for any. I will be grateful for anything. Yeah, because we we are creating this theory about this protective angel because, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, because so interesting. Homeless Link can be a big character on this series uh, because of the first episode we can see, we can see her and she appears in these three seasons, and we hope she appears in season four. If she appears in season four, this theory can be more alive than ever because <laughs> this protected angel can be help Daniel and Johnny against John Chris. Maybe she can have the key to defeat Cobra Kai. Just maybe. Just maybe. Well, you know, have you ever asked any of the big three that? Yeah, yeah, the big three, yeah. uh, the creators of Cobra Kai. Yeah, yeah, the, the, cre the creators and the writers. So it's yeah. whatever they have in their heads. And the thing is, at the end of the day, it's probably so much better than, than any theory that I could come up with or the fans <laughs> have come up with because they're, you know, it's their baby and, and um, their creation of, of all of these, these characters, especially the new characters like Lynn. Um, you know, so uh, I just trust them to to um, to bring whatever they want to bring, and it's usually so far been you know a little comic relief. So I'm I'm happy to do that. So, what are you expecting from the season four? What is this uh, rivalry you can see more you know, from the guys, from the senseis? What is what are you looking for the season four? Well, for me, I think that um, with season four, it's almost like, um, and especially with the COVID and everything that this we've all been enduring this past year and over a year, it's um, probably just the family um, unity that has been established amongst the Cobra Kai family, the cast and the crew. And that's really special after you've done numerous seasons now and then you know you nobody was able to work for so long and we're still all being very um, mindful and, and safe um, that you know you're just so grateful to be back to working number one and um, for the Cobra Kai family to in Karate Kid family to be back together and I'm sure that the the, the cast and the crew feel uh, you know a sense of uh, gratitude and relief that you know that we're able to to work 
and continue this this wonderful story and share it with all the fans. So um, I think season four is going to have a level of of love and passion and gratitude and commitment that that um, you know. I mean, they've all we've always everybody has always been all in because they just love it so much. But I think there's going to be an even greater sense of passion and urgency and um, just love for each other and the project and in um, these characters than ever before. And when will we expect the premiere of season four? Well, I don't know. I haven't heard. Um, I mean, I think it's kind of common knowledge that they're, you know, they've started production, right? Everybody knows that. Um, I mean, you know, the way that everything is, I would, I would hope that they would try to um, get it turned around as quickly as they could. So I don't know. Well, I mean, they, I think the guy, the big three, they're so good about letting, um, letting us kind of in on those kinds of information when they get it with Netflix. It's, it's not all up to the big three. So we'll see guys. Yeah, we can, we can really hope that the premiere comes soon because we want to know more from this wonderful world from Cobra Kai. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. we're thinking maybe it can be for the end of the year, the premiere. Uh, other people say uh, maybe it can be this year. Um, this Wouldn't that be great? December. December, December. Yeah. yeah. Be a nice Christmas present, right? Or holiday present. Yeah, yeah. We, we yeah. hope that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we can say goodbye from for with a typical phrase from Homeless Link. From uh, your subscribers from YouTube channel. Well, I just want to say thank you both, first of all, for having me, and thanks to all of the fans out there for watching, because I ain't gonna hurt you. <laughs> thanks <laughs> thank a you lot. So it's a thank you. huge honor to have you in your channel, and we are so nervous because um, you are the first international in other language guest from your channel. So thanks a lot to be here with us and we can, uh, so happy for this and thank you. Thank you a lot. Thank you. It's my pleasure, guys. I did not know you were nervous. Y'all did great. <laughs> thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Take care. Stay yeah. in touch. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody can follow me at yeah. I am Susan Gallagher at Instagram. And on Twitter, it's Susan L. Gallagher. And then Facebook, it's Susan Gallagher. But the fans have started a page called Homeless, uh, Cobra Kai's Homeless Lynn. So I'd love <laughs> to engage with all of you. So thanks again.